Jeremy, in Genesis 3 version 2.2, I believe you changed the APIs of Genesis 3. Is that right? That is correct. And, you know, the whole world's moving towards programmability. That Cisco pushing this whole network automation, network programmability thing. But Genesis 3's had an API for a while. Uh, yes, since version 2.0, I think. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, what kind of API is it? So this is a REST API. So if I have a Genesis 3 client, so this is like the GUI, yeah? Yeah. When it talks to the VM, is that using a REST API? Uh, yes. So there's REST here. Yeah, the REST API is there. Uh, it's basically a HTTP-based uh, API. Yep. And I saw in some of your documentation you had it as JSON. What is that? So JSON is a, is a format we use uh, to, to send the information. Yep. Uh, using the REST API. So basically, when you do a REST call mm -hmm. to the VM, yeah. the data is formatted in this JSON format. In JSON formatting. format, yes. Okay, but from our point of view, mm -hmm. this is cool that the GUI does it, but is it possible to write a Python script or something you to interact? You can use a Python script or use a, a tool like uh, curl yeah. to uh, directly uh, use this API to talk to the server. Okay, so let's talk about that now because I've actually just said GUI to VM, but that's mm. not entirely correct, is it? It should be the controller, is it? The controller, yes, the Genesis 3 controller. So in a separate video, we spoke about the Genesis 3 architecture. So if you want to learn more about the architecture, have a look at that video. But the controller is sort of the brain, for lack of a better word, yeah? Yeah. Of Genesis 3. So actually the GUI is talking to the controller. Yeah. And this talks to what you called, if I remember right, uh, server processors. Server processors or computes. Sorry, compute. Yes. Yeah. So the compute processes then talk to the... Emulators. Emulators. Yeah. So that would be Dynamips and this could be QMU or whatever, yeah? Yeah. So what we're going to talk about now is mainly this piece, the REST. The REST API. Okay, so I could use curl. What's curl? Curl is a, is a tool, a command, command line, line tool yeah. that you can use to create like a API request. So it's command line URL. So just yeah. if you're not aware, you could you could use like a web browser or something to mm. to go to a URL. This is just doing it through the CLI. Yes. And basically, what you're doing here is you could push a a, a REST call mm -hmm. to the controller rather than using HTTP in a browser or something. You're doing exactly. it the command line. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, for instance, tell curl, uh, I want to get all the nodes from that project. Uh, using the API, and it, you will get it like uh, in JSON format. Yeah, so, so it's returned in JSON format. Yeah. And I mean, I could do the same thing with Python. Yes. So I could use what's it called, requests. Request, like the Python module. Yeah, so request is a Python module uh, to talk to, to the To do controller. like HTTP-based uh, request. And... Um, is it requests or requests? I can't remember. Uh, request with a uh, S, yeah. With a uh, S, I think. Oh, it's got S. Yeah, request, I think. Okay, so basically you could write a Python script. Yeah. The GUI is doing this anyway. Mm -hmm. You could use curl just you could to do use basic curl. stuff. You could use any, any program that does a HTTP request. So let's talk a little bit about REST because, mm -hmm. I mean, you're very much a programmer, but mm -hmm. a lot of us aren't. So no. in REST... If I want to get a list of nodes, like mm -hmm. the example you used from a project, mm -hmm. what kind of REST call is that? So it would be a GET uh, call. So like HTTP GET. Like HTTP we, GET, yes. Like we have, like when you go to a server with a browser, you do a GET, don't you? Yes. So that just gets the information. Gets uh, the information. But if I wanted to create a project, what would I use then? Uh, then you will create a POST request. So it's POST to yeah. create. So GET just gets it yeah post is to create something yeah well yes so this y would create a project yeah you also have a put request put? yeah what's that to uh, that's usually to put uh, to uh, update information on server to update uh, node uh, data for instance okay so if i wanted to get like a list of nodes mm -hmm. in a project i'll use a get you will use get this would create to, a to create something like a node a link okay uh, anything you 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 will use post 
and then the switch to update something. to update something a project a node uh, anything and you also have a delete or oh, delete yeah yeah delete and delete is used to as a name stale, uh, stales, uh to delete anything like node link project so you could automate an entire a uh, project all the nodes all the links just using everything the using a api uh, you can yeah create a project, control your project, delete a uh, link, create a node, update a node, uh, anything. I mean, that's what the GUI is doing anyway, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's a GUI uses uh, the REST API to to control everything in uh, Gen3. So, I mean, one of the things someone said is like they want to create a console-based GUI. They could do that, but they that's could not do something that, yes. you're going to do. So that's not something we have on the roadmap now. So it's not on the roadmap, but you. There's nothing stopping me or anyone else. Creating anyone it. can create his own tool using the API. Uh, yeah, there's no limitation. Big question: Where do we learn about the API? So the API, we have a website where all the API document documentation is. It's it's a uh, it's hosted on api.gen3.net. So API dot gns3.net yes okay. that's where you go and you have the api documentation yeah what the different calls do uh, what what how, how to use the api basically great so if, if anyone wants to learn how to use the api they can go there they can see the mm. apis mm. and a big question because this often is something that people find frustrating is different versions the api changes now yes. that has happened in 2.2 that's it? in 2.2 we have some uh, changes uh, especially around uh, appliances and templates, uh, we we have like we you can manage the templates directly on the GN3 server, GN3 controller. So you have a uh, new new uh, endpoints for templates, and also the there was minor changes around the appliance endpoints. Okay, but going forward, the API could change, but you're going to try and keep it minimal. Will you? We we will try to keep it minimal, or we we're going to change a version of the API. Oh, okay. So, what version of API will it be with 2.2? Will uh, it will be, uh, it's going, it's, it's version 2 of yep. the API, uh, but someday we might, if the changes, changes are major, we will use like a version 3. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us about the, um, the API? Mm, no, no, I think that's everything. So, I mean, just for everyone's benefit, again, this API that we're talking about is between the clients and the controller. Yeah. But, you do use REST between the controller and the compute nodes, but mm -hmm. that's internal, isn't it? That's internal. Uh, you're not supposed to to use this API. Uh, use a public API for the for the Gen3 controller. That's great, Jeremy. Thanks so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So, if you want to try it out, have a look at api.gn3.net. Was uh, it? This is correct. Yes. Yep. And. You know, you could use Python, anything like that, bash scripts, or just use curl to, you know, interact with the GNS3 uh, server. Brilliant. Jeremy, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.